Hello. Well, uh, today I'm going to do another anniversary of a movie. Uh, this is most likely going to be the oldest one I can find that I really want to talk about. Um, that is Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Um, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, in my top 20, honestly, and this might not be in everyone else's top 20, but I just love this movie. Love James Stewart. Love Frank Capra. Um, yeah, and this is 80 years old this year. came out in 1939. Um, I think this is, this is James Stewart's best performance of his entire career. Um, yes, I know uh, films like, you know, it's a Wonderful Life, you know, a film like that, or any of the other movies like the Hitchcock films, like Rear Window and Vertigo, Anatomy of a, yeah, Anatomy of a Dog, yeah, help. Yeah. Uh, it's too late. I probably shouldn't be doing this when I am, but. I know if I don't do this now, I'm probably going to neglect this until who knows when. Just going to get this over with now. Because honestly, I don't really have a whole lot to say, honestly. This is one of those movies words can't do justice for, honestly. Um, I know I've said that quite a bit recently. So it might get to the point of, what's the point of even doing a video when you have literally hardly anything to contribute. And that's a good point. Uh, for me, it's just I love this movie, and um, even though it is a classic, there are people who just have never seen this movie. May have never even heard of it. May have seen James Stewart before. You know, It's a Wonderful Life. You know, it's that time of year. It's Christmas time. It's a huge movie. So, you know, sure. Anatomy of a Murder. That's, that's, that, that's the film. Sorry, um, just came to me. Um, but you know, uh, you know, they might be people might be familiar with some of James Stewart's work. It's a Wonderful Life, which was also directed by Frank Capra. Um, and um, you know, the Hitchcock films. Um, but uh, this is from 1939. This is essentially the film that really made him a leading actor. He had some good parts before, some years before he worked with Frank Capra on a film before. Um, which uh, film is that? What film was that? I know it. You can't take it with you. That was the movie. Yeah, you can't take it with you. It's like the first time they ever worked together. It also features Gene Arthur. Interesting. She didn't want James Stewart in this film. Um, I think it was. I think she wanted Cary Grant, if I can't, if I recall correctly. Like, not that she had anything necessarily against James Stewart. She just wanted somebody else. I think Cary Grant um, could be wrong. Uh, in the comments below, if you recall, or I could in the comments, just like type uh, in the comment and pin that. My correction. I've done that before. But, yeah. This is just an incredible film. I really like how James Stewart plays this, like, the everyman. He gets, he get, he's, essentially, he's chosen to be, uh, you know, a senator. And he, after a senator of the state, you know, he, he passes away. And he, uh, has to uh, fight amongst the politicians that are there, the career politicians. Uh, Claude Rains plays a character who uh, was a friend of his father's, and his father admired him quite a bit. And Claude Rains likes him. And as the film goes on, and the way there's things that are going in motion, that there are certain plans they want to do for certain, like certain land. And well, which what 
uh, Jefferson Smith, Jim Stewart's character, because you know, he's Mr. Smith. Um, he has plans to do something else. He has an idea of what he'd like to do, and that conflicts with what their plans are. And you know, essentially, that's going to get them quite a bit of money. And uh, they're going to try and spin it how it's all his fault. You know, he wants to make money. He's going to pocket what any f money that's raised, and you know, he wants it to be like sort of like a boys sort of like a boys camp or something like that uh, wherein they'll raise it themselves and that's how this like a little uh, camp park uh, whatever will be which will be used for and they'll pay for it it'll be like the you know they'll uh, pay for it once this plans like like essentially yeah it's just to watch the movie really it's just this interesting a film about politics, and one thing that's great is they don't really use any sort of names of the parties. Uh, you know, they don't say so and so's a Democrat or so and so's a Republican. You know, so and so. You know, I guess independents weren't necessarily a huge thing back then. Not to say there were no independent politicians, but you know, obviously, you know, it's not like today where you know there's more than just the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Independent Party, the Libertarian Party, the Green Party, and other parties to help fit with people's ideologies, political ideologies in, here in America. Um, and it's really good because they don't really say so and so is this, so and so is that. It'd be very easy, and you'd be like, well, that party sucks because so and so plays this character, and they sort of seem like so and so in real life. So this party. This political party is horrible. Well, that part, political party is horrible. Um, now, James Stewart is a big conservative. Um, he's a Republican. And same with Frank Capra. They both were. Um, could be a reason why they got along quite well and worked together quite often. Um, but um, also, I don't think it's just because of politics. I, you know, Obviously, they have to generally just like each other in general, um, because if they, you know, if they don't like each other, you know, regardless of what political uh, affiliations you might share with somebody else, if you don't like somebody, you know, well, you're just just things just aren't going to work out very well, and I'm pretty sure that uh, partnership they had would have fizzed out real fast. Um, you know, uh, James Stewart was also best friends with, um, uh, Henry Fonda, who was a, a liberal, a Democrat. They got along quite well. Um, and I only say that because, you know, it's interesting to see how the dynamic between all these people in this film work. And you kind of wonder, well, who's who? Like, who's a Republican? Who's a Democrat? Because um, it's never said. And i that's something I actually sort of like. It sort of gets to the point where, you know, it doesn't even matter what party one is on, what one is on. You know, you can have people who are Democrats who are good, have people who are Republicans who are good, but then you can have those who are Democrats and Republicans who are bad. And unfortunately, those who are bad often, you know, they represent them as a collective whole. People view that, oh, that party is horrible because so-and-so is in it, or, you know, who's it is in that party, so don't be affiliated with them. Um, it's just interesting how this film was made, and, you know, if it was made today, it would probably make it a very obvious, like, uh, this person's a Republican, this person's a Democrat, mm. this person's whatever. And then some would be good, some would be bad. It'd be they'd try to sort of like have a political agenda. Uh, filmmakers to these these days would have like a sort of like, they could have an agenda to sort of slam a party by having certain horrible characters be affiliated with that party. And um, this movie does not do that. Um, you know, uh, people are like there's a lot of politics in Hollywood. That's true. You know, honestly, they're have been politics in Hollywood, I'm sure, for a long time. But, you know, 
just it seems to be more and more apparent nowadays and sort of a certain bias that people often speak of and talk about. Um, you know, regardless of what your thoughts are on that, whether you agree with it or not, that's just something that has been a big uh, talking point for many years now. Um, you know, over a, a decade or two, you know, it's just been around for a while. Um, but James Stewart gives his career best. He deserved the Academy Award for this film. He won the following year for a Philadelphia Story for Best Actor, despite the fact he was actually a supporting role. But, you know, they screwed up and they were like, we realize he should have won for this film. And now they gave it to Robert Donat, and apparently they thought Robert Donat should have, he should have won previously for, I guess, other film another film or two, but he didn't have one, so gave it to, they shafted James Stewart this year, the, the award ceremony, but in the following year, they shafted uh, Henry Fonda, or the Grapes of Wrath, who gave a better performance than Stewart, um, and also Charlie Chaplin was in uh, The Great Dictator and got nominated, and, you know, he would have been just as worthy of the Oscar as Fonda would have been. Um, uh, now, if Stewart was up for supporting actor, you know, that'd be different. Um, but I think it would be still obvious he deserved it for this. And he always saw his Oscar win for Philadelphia Story as, you know, he really won it for this film just a year later in with a different title uh, engraved instead of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. I actually think this is also the best film of 1939. 1939 had some of the biggest films of that year. You know, Gone with the Wind, The Wizard of Oz. Uh, you know, um, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, or Goodbye, Mr. Chips, which was the film Robert Donat was in that beat us. Uh, uh, you know, James Stewart. He, um, yeah. Uh, there's so many great films from 1939. It's like, I could keep going on and on and on, and that's not what the entire point of this video is. It's about this movie and just talking about my fondness for it and uh, what I appreciate about it and everything. You know, I do think, you know, I think this was uh, deserving of Best Picture and Director. It won original story for Best Writing and was nominated for Screenplay, which... Adapted and original did not exist. Original story was essentially uh, whoever created the story. So uh, here, Lewis R. F uh, uh, Foster, he won the Oscar, the only Oscar for this film, even though nowadays it'd be like original screenplay by for both him and Sidney Beckham. Um, yeah. Um, Claude Rains was nominated for Supporting Actor, as was um, Edward Arnold, I believe. Uh, whoever, or maybe it was, I I forget the dude's name. That's nice. Uh, and then of course, they're not really even going to say, they're even going to show what he got nominated for for the Oscars here. Because I like this set, it's really good, it's a really nice set. If you haven't, if you don't have this Blu-ray, I recommend it. It's incredible. Doesn't this have? Uh, oh, for, oh, that's other stuff. Okay, well, somebody else was nominated for supporting actor this year uh, for this film. I want to say, actually, it might have been Thomas Mitchell. I think it was Thomas Mitchell. Yeah, I don't mind. Don't pay attention to what I said earlier. Never mind. Yeah. It's Thomas Mitchell. Um, yeah, Of Mice and Men was also nominated for Best Picture this year with Lon Chaney Jr. and um, Burgess Meredith. And I actually think uh, Lon Chaney Jr. deserved the Supporting Actor Oscar, but he wasn't even nominated. So I guess if those who were nominated, I'd give uh, Claude Rains the Oscar. I think he deserved it for those nominated. But that's my thought. On that whole thing. I think I've talked about that before. Uh, 
and some other videos, particularly pertaining of Oscars and whatnot. Um, but, you know, uh, Gone with the Wind is an incredible film. It's an epic film. Uh, Wizard of Oz is classic as well. So many great films that came out in 1939 again. In terms of awards, just so many would have been just as deserving of top prizes as much as anything else. But, yeah, um, that's really it. Uh, I'm sorry, I kind of went off there for a little bit trying to recall who got nominated for what. But, I don't know, because there's a little like a booklet thing, you know, a digi book as they call it. Yeah, uh, I'm like, you know, maybe they'll have like a little, sometimes they have like, you know, sections for awards, which would then help me if I won this award, but what about, what else was it nominated for? Well, I couldn't find that. I don't think it might not be there or it might be, but I don't want to take up more of your time than I already have. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If not, I can understand why at the end that was just random and just unnecessary. But this is as good as this would ever get, honestly. I don't see me re-recording this, and this would be any better. I really don't. That could be just a sad commentary on my videos and the quality of them. Even though I try to give good thoughts out there, I'd never review a movie. I could never review a movie. It'd be pointless to review this, because it's just fantastic, and everything that has ever been said about it has been said. I have nothing new to add. So it would have been just your another generic review. And, um, yeah, nobody wants that. That's why I would just talk about why I like a movie. So anyway, there's all that. Um, as always, I hope you all have a good day, have a good weekend, and have a good week. And until next time, see you all later. Bye.